Good evening, my name is Nim Lalvani and I am the director of the American Migraine Foundation. Thank you for tuning in tonight. As you know, AMF works very hard to bring you access to education and the tools you need for an easiest way possible. We want to give you access to the resources and education when you need them and the moments you need them most. I'm here tonight and here this evening with you to share some tips and tricks that helped me along the holiday season to ensure that I'm avoiding a migraine attack in every way possible. I remember when I was first diagnosed with migraine, I was in college, so I was around 18 or 19 years old, and I wasn't thinking much about avoiding my triggers or doing what's right for my body. In fact, my main concern was really thinking about how do I get through my finals, how do I ace my finals, and really cramming in as many study sessions and pulling all-nighters to get through it all and just get home to my friends and family for the holidays. Well, if I knew what I knew now back then, I probably would have avoided a lot of pain and disappointment from missing some of my best moments and holidays with my family and friends. Now I know better. One of the biggest triggers for me personally during the holiday season is a disruption to my sleep schedule. I cannot express how much lack of sleep can put me on the highway to a migraine attack. And the holiday season is really the time of year where that seems to happen the most. My attention is being competed for at work, with my friends, my family, the lo my loved ones, and then wanting to be doing everything for everybody. Holiday shopping, wrapping the presents, cooking all of the food, and just driving home to see my friends and family and being at every single, single event. What I realized over the years, that was not realistic. It is not realistic to push myself over the limits and not think about what's right for me and to avoid the tri my triggers for migraine. And what I learned over the years and even what I put into practice every day right now during the holiday season is looking my, at my to-do list. What's realistic? What do I really need to accomplish today, tomorrow, maybe this week? And then think about how can I farm that out to some of my friends and family, to my husband, to help accomplish some of those to-dos without stressing myself out. Because if I farm out some of those to-do lists and some of those chores that I just really need to get done, it helps me take control back of my day. When I take control of my day, I'm able to plan better and I'm able to feel better about myself and the way I am approaching my day and not feeling as exhausted as I normally would have been. That way it gives me enough time in my evenings to unwind and also get to bed at the time that I usually want to get to bed. Another recommendation I have for managing a difficult schedule is thinking about the commitments you make during the holiday season. I know I'm guilty of it. I want to be everywhere. It sounds like so much fun to go see the Christmas tree lightings or go to a friend's house for dinner and attend the holiday parties and the office parties and all the fun things that just seem to happen during this time of year. But again, I needed to give myself a reality check. Do I really need to be at every single event? Do I really need to be at every single Christmas tree lighting all across the city of Philadelphia? Probably not. And what made me realize that I needed to prioritize my commitments and my schedule is the frequency of my migraine, migraine attacks when I wasn't doing that. Those two things coupled together really made me realize that you have to prioritize yourself, prioritize your schedule, and be honest with your loved ones and let them know you're unable to commit to some of the events that they're asking you to go to, and also engaging them in the things that you need to accomplish to make your holiday season feel successful and fun, even though you know you're managing your migraine disease. Another tool that I like to uh, apply or another trick that I like to apply when I'm thinking about my schedule is asking my husband or my family to take over a few tasks for me and maybe go on to some events on my behalf. And if that's not an option for you, simply picking up the phone and asking the host to let them know, I may not be able to attend your event, but is there something I can contribute to help you uh, take something off of your hands? And maybe that's something you don't want to do because you yourself have a lot some, have a lot going on. Well, just picking up the phone and thanking the host politely and saying, I appreciate your invitation, but I'm unable to make it. 
But if you're feeling compelled to share the reason why you're unable to make it, this is a great opportunity to start the conversation with your friends and loved ones around uh, what migraine disease is, how it makes you feel, and what triggers your migraine attacks and why the holidays are particularly difficult for you. For example, maybe explaining to the host or hostess that lights and scents and smells, different kind of foods are main triggers for you, and alcohol especially, and that it's just not realistic to be in that environment consistently. Another uh, main trigger for me that I like to make sure that I'm on the lookout for during the holiday season are all the different types of foods and goodies that are available at a, at, at a ready um, anywhere you go during the holiday season. Uh, for example, the cookies, the sweets, the alcohol, the cocktails, all the different things that seem to just crop up out of nowhere. Um, if you're anything like me, that's probably the most difficult thing during the holiday season, uh, but I truly enjoy being able to contribute. And one of the ways that I navigate the food scenario during the holiday season is asking friends and family if I can bring a dish to an event. That way it gives me the ability to know that I'm able to eat something at that scheduled event, but I'm also contributing to the festivities of the season. Another trick that not many people know about me, and it could be kind of weird, however, I do think it works really well, is before an event, I like to eat at home. That way I know I'm eating foods that are nurturing and nourishing to my body and myself, and that when I get to the holiday event, I am not eating from things that, eating things that may be a uh, danger on the horizon towards a migraine attack. If that's not something that's feasible, I definitely recommend asking the host or hostess what may be on the, on the menu if you're comfortable to asking that. That way you can plan ahead and know exactly what you're, what's in the store for you. One of my tricks and tips during the holiday season, and all of my friends and family know this about me, I love looking at a menu ahead of time. It makes me excited, it helps, gets me excited for the event uh, coming up, and just makes me get engaged with what's happening, but also puts me in control of my menu, puts me in control of my food choices, and helps me make educated choice and choices and guesses for my, um, my dinner or my lunch or whatever the meal may be around that festivity. That's really helpful if you're going to a restaurant or a venue. But those aren't always the cases, and so you have to do what's right for you and works for the scenario that you're in. Another issue that I find that is hard to navigate and usually comes up more frequently at this time of year than other times of the year is understanding your alcohol consumption. For some people, alcohol consumption is a major trigger. For others, they may have some flexibility with the amount of alcohol that they're able to consume. For me, it's red wine. I love red wine. I enjoy drinking red wine. I think it's, I think it's a great thing to have during the holidays. However, it's a very known trigger for a lot of people. One of the tricks I love to employ when I am confronted with these scenarios of where there's a lot of alcohol involved and maybe the pressure to consume is more around holiday seasons and holiday parties is I love to have a glass of water or two in between uh, my consumption. That way it allows me to be in control of how much and how frequent I'm drinking during that short time period, but also sort of tricks my body into believing that I'm engaging in this festivity, but really I'm, having, I'm hydrating myself with a lot of water. Now that I've shared with you some of my personal tips and tricks around navigating sleep and disruptive schedules, talking about food and alcohol, I also want to ensure that you know that you should feel empowered to also look at your schedule, to also look at your triggers, and feel the, con feel the confidence to have the conversations with your friends and family to ensure that you're doing what's best for your yourself and what's best for your environment when you're around when that um, party environment or the festive environment and that you feel engaged. And when you're not ready to be engaged, you're able to have the conversations and explain why this may be the case. Um, I also want to share with you some tangible actions. So for example, what are some of the ways you can share these, con have these conversations and share your journey of living with migraine disease with your friends and family? For example, if you have to turn down an invitation or you have to turn down um, a holiday party invite or a dinner invite, 
what's some of the ways that we can um, have these conversations without feeling the guilt or some of the shame associated with it? And a good way to have this conversation is to say, I know it's disappointing when the time we have together seems so short, but it's really important to me for you to support my good decisions that help me keep me healthy. So you're not being rude, number one, you're politely turning down the invitation, but you're also letting someone know that it's important that they hear you and understand why you're making the decisions that you're making. This is a really good way to get someone involved in experiencing your journey and supporting you on what's right for your health care, for your health and the care of your health. Also, if you're feeling more comfortable and able to talk more about your migraine disease and your migraine disease journey, perhaps another way to have this conversation is saying, do you know my migraine attacks can be triggered by lack of sleep, the food choices I make, and also brought on all the stress that brings on a migraine attack? Perhaps we can talk more about it after the holidays. I would love to tell you about my experience with my migraine disease and why it's important for me to take extra good care of myself during the busy holiday season. So here you're sort of expanding, right? You're giving someone a reason why you're making the choices you're making, but also supporting it with some facts that there are real things in your environment that can trigger you into having a migraine attack and that sometimes you need to do what's best for you and make the right choices for you. And so you're letting them in to experience your migraine disease journey, and you're bringing them closer to understanding exactly why you're making the choices you're making, and that it's not something personal to them, but in fact, it's personal to you. Also, Another way to have that conversation is to talk about scents and smells and break down exactly what those triggers can do for you. So one way you can say that is, it is sometimes difficult for me to be in loud spaces with lots of scents and different smells and the light. Those types of, of, of environmental factors really cause me to go have a migraine attack and that makes me uncomfortable and fearful of going through that. Those are real triggers for my migraine attacks, and I do want to spend time with you during the holiday season. But perhaps we can meet on a different day somewhere more quiet. So here you're still sharing your experience and the reasons why you're rejecting a present um, invitation, but you're also giving an alternative to say, I recognize I want to connect with you. I recognize that it's important that we see each other during the holidays, but offering up an alternative. So not only are you explaining and bringing them into your personal experience and journey and the reasons why migraine disease is um, a major part of your life and everyday living experience, but you're giving them an option to be a part of your life and to connect during the holiday season when other opportunities may not be realistic. So those are just a few of my personal tips and tricks on how I navigate the holidays. As I said, I'm really aware of my sleep pattern, my sleep schedule, all of the things that happen to pile up on my to-do list and how I try to manage that with friends and family. And then of course the foods and the alcohol and all the great things that happen this time of year. I really hope tonight's talk gave you some insights on how you can take back some control of your life living with migraine. And put into use some of the tips and tricks and have the right conversations with those you care about. It's important that you advocate for yourself because when you do so, you are advocating for our community who also live with migraine. Because together, we are as relentless as migraine. Thank you.